Now, the Qatar Supreme Committee has issued an apology to Danish broadcaster TV2 after one of their television crews were interrupted by security officials during a live broadcast on one of Qatar's tourist destinations. This is what happened. This land is also being been used for a whole lot of critique. How do you feel about the situation now? Jamen, vi kan jo vise, hvordan forholdene er lige her, hvis vi drejer kameraet. We are live on Danish television, og der kan I se, nu bliver vi, nu bliver vi stoppet med at filme, og det er forholdene her. Mister, you invited the whole world to the... You, you invited the whole world to come here. Why can't we film? It's a public place. This is the uh, accreditation. Okay. We can film anywhere we want. Okay. There are only, of course... But only for the Qatara. Qatara, you have Because the Qatara is... A no, 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 we don't need permit. Yeah. No, no, but, 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 no, but listen, but listen, but listen. But you can break the camera. You want to break the camera? Okay, you break the camera. Okay. So you're threatening us by, 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 by smashing the camera. Well, for more on this, how about this? We can speak live to TV2 reporter Rasmus Tanholder. You saw there, uh, you're still in Doha. Uh, Rasmus, thanks for, for your time. We've just seen that footage of the incident. It looked quite stressful. How did you feel at the time? It was quite stressful. I mean, I didn't feel uh, felt threatened at all, I mean, personally, but uh, I mean, our camera is safe. And of course, I covered uh, World Cups before and, you know, I don't know what I did expect, but I guess I didn't expect that doing a live in front of a roundabout, not in front of a migrant uh, labor camp or uh, anything else controversial, it wouldn't be a problem. So, of course, I was uh, surprised uh, and, uh, you know, we were sitting there with the security guards after the live for about 30 minutes. Uh, we, I don't know if we were detained or if we just you know, had to sit and wait there with them. And after half an hour, the supervisor, he came and he looked at our accreditation and he said, well, you can film, there's no problem. So, I mean, maybe it's a kind of a misunderstanding, but to me, it also shows how Qatar is when there's not a World Cup going on. Because obviously, this is what those security guards has been told to do under normal circumstances. Now we have a World Cup going on and Maybe they have been told to behave in another way, and maybe not all security guards in Doha, they got the message. Yeah. And was your first sign that something was wrong? Because I, I, I've watched the video, we've just seen it. You kind of point to the buggy, the golf buggies, it sort of draws up alongside you. So uh, was there any warning before um, that, that security officials were uh, going to be hot on your heels? Kind of a warning, uh, a white car came up and there was a woman inside the car. She was asking from uh, which TV station we were and that's pretty normal. Uh, we get that question many times from people. But when I told her we were from TV2 Denmark, she, you know, uh, put a note uh, on her iPhone and I thought, that's strange. Why is she writing it down? Five minutes later, these guys came. So maybe in the back of my head, uh, I knew that some things Good might uh, happen, but uh, still I was surprised. Yeah. Uh, we, we saw you as well with the supervisor having that chat about media accreditation. Just tell us what you have to go through to get the accreditation and, and whether you're now kind of happy that that's going to allow you to film wherever you want in the country. Well, it's an official FIFA accreditation. I mean, uh, colleagues from Sky Sports and all kinds of places in the world, they can get this accreditation. Uh, and um, it's, of course, only for media. And we were told that this accreditation will allow us to FIFA venues, but also it will allow us to film everywhere in uh, Doha in public places, like the World Cup in Russia, we could film anywhere. In Brazil, we could film anywhere. In South Africa, we could film anywhere. So, I mean, that's normal when you invite people to a World Cup. You all will also want to show the country to the world. But, of course, if you invite the world to the World Cup, coming here with our cameras, and then you start smashing the cameras, then it doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah. And we've got to point out, no cameras were hurt in the filming of, of that. It, it survived. Um, you ended up getting an apology. Um, I, I, were you happy with, with the outcome? What did they say to you? You said you were there for about half an hour afterwards as well. That's true. And I got an apology on the spot. I also got phone calls and text messages uh, uh, from um, the Supreme Committee uh, and 
yeah, that's fine. I mean, I don't know if I'm happy. And still, I think, well, they did that, I mean, a few hours after the incident. And I thought, well, this might be extremely controversial for Qatar since they really take it very, very seriously what happens. And even though I got an apology, I still think, well, can this happen again? Uh, does all security guards now know and policemen know that the media, they can film wherever they want during the World Cup? And does this show how things are in Qatar before the World Cup and how it will be after the World Cup? That is my suspicion. So, so your sense is this not, might not be the last time or do you think they've, they've learned from this and understand this now? Now I think it's up to um, the Qatari uh, government and uh, organizations to, you know, implement this new set of rules where people can film wherever they uh, go if they have the accreditation. Because obviously that is not the normal procedure. I know for myself how difficult it is to film in some countries like Qatar. You need film permission. It can be very, very hard to get as a journalist. But during the World Cup, they have probably been told, now let's behave, let them film. And if everyone doesn't know those rules, it can happen to other teams. And uh, that wouldn't look very, very good for the uh, Qatar organizers if this happens again. Because now I got all this attention and this clip got all this attention. And, you know, for the Qatar government, I think they hope that this World Cup is going to be a success. All way, also, there, all way, uh, there's already a lot of criticism. And, you know, if these things are happening too many times, well, maybe that will be what we remember this World Cup for. Mm. Rasmus, thanks so much for, for joining us.